I've heard you say you're going to go out and talk to Trump supporters uh, several times. And I know you've heard some backlash about that. We have had backlash about wanting to, you know, it, it, you know, reach out to white working class as some sort of uh, uh, red, uh, bl- uh, red, brown, <laughs> uh, red brown it's just, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just ridiculous. But can like, how, how are you going to, or how, or how ha- are you, or how have you been sort of combat- combating the backlash to that particular point you make of wanting to reach out to Trump supporters? How, how are you going to like sort of respond to that? Well, one is that nobody has really even attempted to do that because the basic culture of the professional managerial class is one Mm -hmm. of arrogance and condescension to view them as irredeemable, to view them as beyond the reach, that the people, they're almost less than human because they are too xenophobic and narrow and myopic and so forth, you see. But that is precisely the kind of professional managerial class arrogance that reproduces the very policies that pushes them further into a neo-fascist mm. position. It was a neoliberalism that generated even more grotesque inequality. And with DEI, with diversity, equity, and inclusion, it made the mm-hmm. class hierarchy more colorful so that black progress was just a matter of representation of black middle class folk at the top as a measure of black progress rather than alleviating the suffering of black mm. poor and working people as the progress. And when white folk who are excluded see that, then they see, well, we're being excluded just like the black folk used to be excluded. And therefore we need somebody who leads us to attack the black, attack the immigrants, attack the, the, those constituted as others rather than Wall Street, rather than Silicon Valley, whether than corporate elites, who are gaining while this divide and conquer strategy is being put forward. Nobody's even tried it. Now, I'm not saying I'll necessarily be successful. You know, I, I don't know what the Lord has in store, but I know that you've got to go places where other people dare to go. That's all. For what? To empower black people. It's the black Amen. folk who need the Medicare for all. It's the black folk who need quality education. It's the black folk who need jobs with a living wage. That's why I'm going to be with the workers when they had to strike this summer. We, with United Parcel Service. Because the masses be there of too. people are working class people. Absolutely. People need, and, and what you are speaking to is extremely true. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that despite being 13% of the population, black people make up 40% <laughs> Of the homelessness population. Exactly. So the homelessness pro- pro- uh, problem is a black problem. You want to yeah, know what exactly. demographic has the highest amount of medical debt? Like my parents? Yes, yes. Black people, by far. And it's like not even a close second. It's like black people way ahead. And But, but these are also issues that the poor white working class struggle with. Medical debt, for example, homelessness. We struggle with it more. So yeah. what we argue is if you uplift the black working class, everyone would benefit. Absolutely. Everyone would be benefit. We we benefit, we suffer the most from the ills of capitalism in our, in our society, but everyone's, everyone uh, struggles with that. And that's why we have the radical politics that we have.